I think it's been like a year maybe since I did a how-to video, but Adobe just launched their new Firefly app for Android and for iOS. So when Adobe asked me if I wanted to test out the app before it came out and maybe make a video on it, I said yes. So here is not just how to use the new Firefly mobile app, but also why it might be the only AI image and video generator that you should use if you're a professional creative. I've used Firefly mobile to do generative expand on the fly to make a YouTube thumbnail vertical to be better for social, create 3D animations to put into my videos easily, and even add a second hand to my watch when I wanted a visual to illustrate how something was as quiet as a ticking watch and more. It ends up being quite useful for creators who don't know how to use Photoshop very well or After Effects and all also good for people who don't know what either of those are maybe and just want to use some of the AI features on their phones before they share the image or video. So if you're not familiar, Firefly is the name for the generative AI component slash AI model in Adobe's ecosystem. And it's present in pretty much all of Adobe's creative suite at this point in various different ways. You can use generative expand inside Photoshop, for example, which uses Firefly to do so. Same with say generative remove in Lightroom and generating images in Photoshop as well. And while that is one way that you can access Firefly from within your existing workflow in those apps. Up until now, if you wanted to simply create generative assets like images and video, etc., you would have to go to the web browser to use Firefly on its own. You can use the Firefly mobile app to do a lot of the same things, but in a much better experience for mobile. And again, if you're a professional creative, I would highly recommend using Firefly for all of these type of generative stuff instead of other Gen AI models. And I'll explain why a bit later, but right now, Let's jump into the app. Real quick, the app is laid out identically on iOS and Android, so this video will work for either. And when you first open the app, you'll be asked to sign into your Adobe account. If you don't have one, you can easily sign up at the link below for a free trial. Once logged in, you'll be greeted by a prompt text box with a toggle for image or video. Right now though, let's quickly tap the menu button and you'll see home, which we'll go back to in a sec, files and gallery. Files will basically show you everything you've ever generated in Firefly so that you can go back to it easily and iterate on it or re-download it, whatever you might need. And gallery is where you can get inspiration from other users that have submitted their generative images and videos along with the prompt that created it. So that can help you learn a bit more on how to get certain things with specific prompts. And you can upload your own for submission here as well. Back on the homepage, you could start typing in your prompt and tap image or video to turn the text prompt into either of those. And scrolling down, you have more options including both text to image and video, but also image to video, generative fill and generative expand. Now, even for the text image and the text to video, I'd recommend tapping one of these options down here instead of using that prompt box. And I say that because once you do, you are presented with different settings and you can adjust those before you hit generate to get closer to an end result that you want right out of the gate versus wasting generative credits, which you get a certain amount of with your Adobe account, depending on your plan and can purchase more if you go over that limit. Tapping on the text to image, you can see that same prompt box, but now all of these options on the bottom. We have general, which then gives you access to choose what AI model that you want to use, whether that's one of Adobe's or a non-Adobe model, including the ones that were launched alongside this app recently. And then you can choose the aspect ratio for the image. The next option is content type. So photo or art, it's basically realistic, versus illustration. This by default will actually auto choose based on the prompt and what you are asking for. So if you put the word photo in there, it's gonna know you want something realistic, but you can choose here to just make sure that it chooses the one you want. Then we have visual intensity, which is a slider that you can think of how far the model will take the prompt. Composition allows you to upload an image or choose one of the ones available to mimic the composition of that image, meaning that the general outline of where the subject is, the depth of the background and the framing in general. Style has a few options under it, including reference reference, which is similar to outline. You can add a reference image for it to replicate, but instead of the composition, you can replicate the overall style of the image. Think watercolor, pencil drawing, etc. And you can also scroll to get a bunch of options already in the app. Then there is effects that lets you choose from a variety of more specific styles in a few different categories, including different art movements, techniques like light painting, for example, materials like fabric, etc. Color, which compared to effects, is a way for you to choose the coloring style only to be replicated for the image. Lighting does the same, but for lighting only. And lastly, camera, which I actually really like because it's more of how I think of photos and videos, but it lets you choose wide angle, macro, above, below, etc. The only one that might need a little explaining is knolling, which is essentially laying out items on a table or a floor in a very organized way. Now, after you've chosen your options, you can then type in the prompt of whatever you want to generate and hit the generate button to get an image. Next, we have text to video. And again, I recommend adjusting the options first if you know what you want. I'm gonna skip keyframes and we'll come right back to it. It's a 
pretty big feature. But first, let's talk about general options that, like with image, you can choose what AI model you want to use. Then you can choose the resolution up to 1080p. And then what aspect ratio you want for the video. Next to that, we have camera, which again is similar to the photo option, but with a bit more granularity. We have shot size, as in the framing and distance, really, of the shot and subject. Camera angle and then motion, or how you want the shot to move. And then under advanced, you'll see something called seed. Now, this is a random number that the model generates to simulate pseudo-randomness in generating of the assets, but we won't get into that because it's mainly for people using the Firefly API and it's, well, advanced. Okay, now keyframes. This allows you to upload an image to be used as the first frame in the video. And then optionally, you can add another image or even use the same image to be used for the last frame of the video. And then it'll generate a video in between those. Now I've used this to add wind animations to a fan or a second hand to my watch that doesn't actually exist. And you can start to see how it can make a video generator a lot more useful for a creative. Like those examples where I'm using it to not have to use After Effects, which I'm not as proficient in. And lastly in the app, we have Generative Expand, Fill, and remove. These are actually in one tool together. You can upload a photo from your phone and then expand the image to add content around it. I use this a lot for changing the aspect ratio for something I took in 16 by nine for a better for social nine by 16 or even four by five. You can also remove things in the image and with a lot more options than other apps that can do that, like changing the brush size and subtracting parts that you didn't want highlighted to get very specific if you need to. And finally, you can insert items into the image using a similar brush system as remove, but also type in a prompt to generate something in that space. Now, any of the things you do in the mobile app show up in the file section, right? But that is also synced with your account. So you can start something on mobile whenever the inspiration happens, and you can then continue it on desktop if you wanted to later. And of course, the app means you can skip the computer altogether and work entirely on your phone and then pull those assets into whatever editing program you use on your phone. Okay, so why Firefly for professional creatives? Well, it comes down to to rights. Most of the other image generation models scrape the internet to teach their AI models what things are, and then they generate the content based on what they find. The issue is that most of the time, they are scraping websites without their permission. And so you may or may not have the rights to the image or the video that you generate. For average people that are just kind of playing around in the app, probably not that big of a deal. But if you're a professional creative and you're making commercial content, let's say you're making something for a brand, you might technically be breaking a copyright. Think of it like using stock footage or stock images. There are sites where you can buy images and videos that the creator of them has built in the cost of the rights to use the clip or photos and gives you commercial rights to use it in your own project. Think of Adobe Stock, which is Adobe Stock Image and Video site. You technically need the same for these generated images and videos. And Firefly is the only one that I know of, at least, that includes these rights with every video or image that you create. Essentially, Firefly was trained on Adobe stock photos, which offer over 400 plus million assets, which are vetted to be higher quality, by the way, as well as openly licensed content and public domain content that Adobe, and thereby you in this case, have rights to, essentially offering you intellectual property indemnification. And I personally have worked with clients who have asked me to make content, and then they've gone through every single shot that I have and asked for proof of rights for each one. And if I wasn't using Firefly for those things, then I would have nothing to show, and I'd have to then read generate that content, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, beyond that, you can also use partner models, so non-Adobe ones like VO2 and 3, Imogen 3 and 4, as well as OpenAI's image generation model. So even using the Firefly app, you have plenty of choices. And there you go. If you want to check out the app, I'll leave links below for a free trial if you don't already have an Adobe account. And if you do, then I'll leave links below where you can download the app for iOS and for Android. Let me know what you guys think about the app and about this video. Always appreciate hearing from you guys in the comments below. Subscribe and ding the bell so you get notified when I do new videos if you're not already. And I'm going to go mess around with the app some more. Good night. And while that is one way that you can access Flyer Fo Flyer fly. Flyer fly. I need sleep. <laughs> and while that is one way that you can access fire, ex access? Why, why am I saying it like that? Access? Oh my God, I forgot how to say the word. Is that a thing? Limited access. Access. <laughs> Can I need sleep? My hand is very close to you. And there you go. Oops, knocked my coffee out of here. Oh, I moved the coffee like a dummy. Meh, who knows? Nobody knows. Probably like that. Yeah. Continuity be damned.